of all, good to see everybody face to face. We had a prep session which was online, but uh, you know nothing beats uh, meeting folks face to face. And Sai, thank you so much for uh, you know taking us through your holistic transformation story and setting up new benchmarks. You know, two second loan is a wonderful thing. So I'll come back to you, Sai, to dwell deeper into the transformation story. Uh, we'll start with Satyaki. Satyaki, you want to talk about how do you deliver magic to your customers? Absolutely. So for Siet, uh, just like our employees, our customers have been absolutely at the core of our beliefs and our culture. And we have always felt that having a great customer experience will differentiate us from the competition and also just not the competition, but also make us relevant to the customers. So, so when we started off on this whole customer transformation journey, we looked at how can we create new purchase or now new pricing models. We looked at how can we have newer channels of interaction or purchase. And not just that, then give a whole omni-channel experience to our customers because many times you create channels but they're not unified. And just like for something like a tire, and I'm sure a lot of you own cars, but uh, when did you last see which branded tire do you actually use? Because it's a very low uh, attention or engagement segment, right? You hardly ever see which, I mean, even if you buy a car, you would hardly know what tire you are actually it's fitted out there the question is for such a segment how do you create that personalization and the engagement with the customer that becomes a challenge and therefore experience through even through metaverse for example becomes very important because then you you actually you know engage with the customer and finally we are also looking at how can you be in the moment with the customer before a problem has occurred so for example can, before your tire is about to leak, can you actually send them an alert, right? So getting into the mind space of the customer to create that experience through real-time data and also through modes of engagement, these are the broad methods how we have used for transforming the customer experience at Seat. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we move to Nishchay. You know, one of the themes that you carry is creating stronger bonds. You know, and stress on the word uh, Jod, right? <laughs> so, and you're present in every household. I cannot imagine a house without your brand. So, what's your customer transformation story? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, see, for us uh, at Pridlight, when you look at Pridlight as a CPG company, and that's how the outer world looks at us. But uh, when you come into Pridlight's world, our secret sauce is basically the influencer. Okay. For us, the customer is our contractor, is our mason, is our carpenter, is a plumber who's doing the work at your house. So for us, it is about making that experience or that engagement with that contractor and making him recommend your products at every site that he goes to. So how does Pidlight uh, or our secret sauce is how do we engage better with contractors? Because today when you are getting furniture made at home and I think most of us at Bombay believe in modeler getting it done outside and then bringing it here. How do you know what, what they are using to stick your furniture? Or how do you know what goes into waterproofing your building? So creating that bond with the contractor becomes extremely important for us. And um, for Pidlight to crack that, We've been on this journey for the last four to five years on how do we engage with contractors through apps, through meets, through uh, learning. So we're trying to find ways so that the contractors feel that, you know, Pidlight is a brand which is trying to help us generate more business. So for us, our customer is a contractor and it's a B2C, B2C business. So Sai, we'll come back to you. Wonderful story. Um, you spoke about, uh, you know, scale. You spoke about uh, uniqueness in retail lending, marred with, uh, you know, technical complexities. But uh, what I saw on your site was Bharat Ke Lender, right? And on one side, you're talking about unique customers. And the other side, you're talking about diverse set of customers being Bharat Ke Lender. So how do you democratize data? 
you know, uh, you're collecting all the data. You spoke about omni-channel experience and a wonderful architecture supported by Salesforce and MuleSoft. But how do you democratize data in your organization? See, like, like any organization, and more so for the fintech organization, data is the, the old oil or the new oil. It is the oil. <laughs> the reason I say that is every customer, we try to make them a repeat customer. Because every customer is a new business opportunity for us. Right? If, I, if someone is taking a two-wheeler loan from us, we will not uh, want to restrict him only to with a two-wheeler loan. We would like to cross-sell with him. We want him to buy a new car. Okay? We want him to buy the next Mercedes. Uh, we, we want them to take a house loan from us. So whatever it is, you know, through the journey of the customer, through his progress in their lives, we want to be playing a major role. So because of that, now that's our motto, the Bharat Kilender. With that motto, every data point about every customer is extremely important for us. The way they are progressing, the age at which they are taking their first loan, the age at which they are building their house, the age at which their children are coming up, you know, everything is a pattern for us. And then that's how this data falls in really well. And our models, and our models really help us contact these customers in a way that it is not intrusive because sometimes we see a lot of spam coming out of our mobile phones. In a way, it is not intrusive. In a way, it is more informative for them and still maintain that connect throughout the life cycle of a given loan as well as even if the loan is done with the customer, we just make sure that we are connected with them for the lifetime. So I'll give a, a data point to this. Now we have 30% of our customers are repeat customers. Now whether it is a two-wheeler segment and now we are also dealing a lot with the personal loans. Uh, we give personal loans only when we have a strong confidence that it is going to be repaid because it's mostly unsecured in nature. So, so the, the repeat customers tells a long thing about how associated they are with a brand and our policy to be non-intrusive to the customer and then contact them only if it's absolutely necessary. Everything else is digitally done. And, and that's why we make sure the data is available to sales engineer, like I'm talking about the omnichannel experience every time at the fingertips. Wonderful. So C8 is about, you know, discovering the new you. And uh, we are referring to 110 countries operations, 51,000 plus sales touch points. OEM market replacements, uh, you know, uh, focus or the uh, brand focus on grip and safety. So how do you create a single view of customers? You know, uh, what it's like integrating 20 systems, 25 systems, multiple countries, multiple geos. So what does a single view of customer look like for you? That's a very interesting question. And this is where we are currently focusing our effort. So if you see the entire sales service uh, and the interaction with our partners, dealers, distributors, whether they are in India or abroad, uh, it happens through Salesforce. So Salesforce is the backbone through which we do. And a lot of what we have done in the last few years is thanks to the whole infrastructure support and, and the whole application that we have seen from Salesforce. Now, Obviously, there will be different other information coming through websites, uh, uh, buyer preferences that we see through websites and other cookies that we see today, which unfortunately, we may not have third party cookies going forward. That's, that's another challenge. But uh, I think the, the, the key thing is, uh, we're still trying to understand even the browsing patterns, even people who are going to other sites, for example, there are other websites where people go to even look for recommendation of tires. So we get feeds about the browsing patterns, what kinds of options have been uh, looked for in other third party websites. And the key is to get that information on one single platform. Now that is one part of it. The other part, that we are also trying to get, and this is more in a developmental stage, is the whole experience about connected tires. So how can tires be connected? Now, 
generally what happens is you put a tire and you forget about the tire. You only remember the tire when there is a leak and your car is stalled on the road, right? So the question is, how do you get real-time data to give you a sense that, look, if your pressure is falling, you may be actually at the risk of losing your mileage by so-and-so, or you are at the risk of your tire slipping out uh, when you are taking a curve on a highway, especially at this kind of a temperature. So that's where the whole value comes in. And the question is, how do you get that real-time data on a platform and also then transmit to a customer and then give the value? So it's not just about a sale, but it is also creating the after-sale experience with the customer, right? So one of the solutions that we are also looking at is the whole marketing cloud for the sales part. Now, obviously, we are also thinking if we have to have the, the per tire data, where do we get, what's the size, how do we unify the data on one single platform, what is the retention period? So all of that is under a discussion, but you are right. Eventually, unless you put one unified view, including the journey as well as the after sale data, the vision, I mean, that's where exactly our vision is going. How do we unify and then use the power of real time analytics to make meaningful inferences? So can we assume grip and safety powered by data? Well, <laughs> that's in the works, right. in the works. But yes, that's the vision where we are moving towards. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Satyaki. So, Nishay, uh, we spoke about engagement with the influencers, with the contractors, you know, but there is an element of consumers as well, you know. So, how do you form a single view of an influencer? How do you form a single view of a contractor? And then, uh, how does it, uh, you know, life must be interesting, you know. You have carpenter on one side, consumer on the other side. Uh, interesting question. So, um, I've been looking at these screens over here and all kinds of stuff is being written here. The data is noise, all data is noise and then it says data is everywhere. It's coming up next. So, okay. don't steal so, the thunder from... I'm not from stealing any thunder but, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the fun part is that uh, when, you, when you get data from so many touch points, uh, what happens is that uh, you need to understand the degree of recency that's required when creating the customer 360 and the availability or the number of touch points that you need. And that helps you define uh, what kind of a dashboard, what kind of customer 360 that you need. So for uh, giving you a real life example, if somebody wants to do waterproofing, uh, what happens is that you'd see a Amitabh Bachchan ad and you would go ahead and call that number. Now what happens is once you call that number, uh, we have multiple stakeholders who look at multiple data points to understand. For example, when as soon as the lead comes, a call center agent is able to see everything about you if he's talked to you before. But that lead is then then goes to a contractor. The same uh, field employee in that area knows about that lead. The contractor is able to action that lead on his app. Everybody sees relevant data for that lead on their own, you know, screen or pane of glass. Now, what that helps us do is that if a CMDI or, or for us, the field employee, when he reaches the site, he already knows which, uh, which stage the site is at. He, uh, the call center agent already knows what the customer has spoken last time. He has a 360 view and he needs a very recent 360 view versus a manager at HO where we've you know given him a bird's eye view. He's able to see stuff that's probably a day old, but that has a lot of other analytics into it. So what we've done is you've used, and like you, Asatyaki, about 20, 30 systems, all of these integrate into a, a middleware of sorts. And then we create the whole data lake house and we visualize this at different places with these three metrics in place, availability, recency, and, and the number of touch points that you need to see. So that's how uh, we try to get our view of a customer. So I think uh, we are running out of time. So one final, uh, you know, question to you guys. Uh, let's say, you know, I'm rubbing the magic lamp and uh, the Salesforce genie comes out and grants you wishes. 
you know, earlier we were thinking of three wishes, but um, in the, you know, we're running out of time. So Salesforce Genie grants you one single wish. So what would be your wish or what would be your ask to the Salesforce Genie? So, uh, I mean, first of all, I'll be happy if the Genie comes in. What, what, I, would, what I would ask is, uh, can we help transform the legacy systems in a Jiffy to the modern tech stack? Because why I say this is, whenever we attend such conferences, we know that there's a lot of capability right, in the, in the new way of working. But what we are stuck with is our legacy systems. Even though we want to come to this world, we can't leave the old world back. So I would like Jeannie if they can help us out there. And Sai, so we hear this from almost every client, you know, 90% of the clients. And, uh, you know, I and Arunati was catching up and uh, this also came up. How do you transform the legacy systems and get on to the innovation journey? Sataki, what about you? That's a, I was thinking actually about it and I felt if we had a universal sensor that could actually reside in my tire, in the minds of my customer, it could get me information real time without a glitch of internet, that gives me the power of information. I can get the data I need to make an intelligent decision. Today, we are constrained by the kind of sensors we have. Of course, there is a lot of evolution that is happening, but getting data real time from where I need, surpassing infrastructural challenges and computational challenges. Computational is a less of a challenge. I think getting the data itself is a challenge. If I could get something magic that could give me that, I think it will give me the power that I need. It. Nishchai, what about you? My take is a bit uh, is a bit different, apart from asking for more wishes. But um, uh, what I would think is that uh, when we create customer journeys, the biggest problem that we have is with standards. Okay, is there one uniform standards with legacy systems or talking uh, other companies that are working together? Is there one standard that we can use? to bring everything together. I think that would be one which can solve a lot of our problems really quickly. I think uh, I'll call upon my colleague, uh, Sonalika. Sonalika, some of the wishes, if you can try to address, and uh, we'll hand it over to her to, uh, you know, for the next session and the demo. I want you, did I skip something? like to just say thank you to the panelists. It's been a privilege and to be part of the brands which run Bharat. So wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank it's a you. Pleasure.